Well, good morning, everyone. First, I want to thank Jim for that uh, very kind introduction. He's correct. Uh, when I first met him, I was a nobody. And he has been uh, encouraging me from day one and supported all my efforts. And I want to thank you, Jim, for not just being a supporter of mine, but also being a friend. I also want to recognize and thank the members of the Board of Visitors who have joined us today here on the front row. And also, it is my pleasure to welcome the Mandela Washington Fellows. As Mandela Washington Fellows, each of you represent the promise and potential of our global future. You are not only great at what you do in your respective countries, as public servants, you all also represent the brilliance, the innovation, and excellence needed to create a better, more just, and more viable global society where everyone, no matter your background or your national origin, can succeed and thrive. It is very similar to the mission we have in the city I represent just about 60 minutes up the road, the city of Richmond, where we focus on building one Richmond. A Richmond, no matter who you are, what color your skin may be, how much money you may have in your pocket, or who you choose to pray to, that you can live out your God-given talents and a high quality of life. The outstanding work you are doing in your home countries and your presence in this unique program is indicative well, the fact that you are creating and telling your own narrative in the face of false and stereotypical narratives long created about people who look like you and me. You are defying the odds and reflecting the genius and beauty and richness of Africa. You know, each of us has a story of personal, social, economic or other hardship and struggle that we have turned into strengths and opportunities. I personally grew up with social and economic challenges, but through encouragement, perseverance, and values instilled in me by my father, my grandmother, and other loved ones, I emerged through the challenges to be able to stand here today and talk to you, to talk to you all as the mayor of the former capital of the Confederacy. I pinch myself each and every day. Uh, as I was raised by my grandmother and she saved my life. I'm a product of kids having kids. My mother was 15, my father was 19 when I was born. They were, they had no idea how to raise a child. And lucky enough, I had my grandmother in my life. I regularly say that my grandmother saved my life, and she did. Uh, we grew up on free and reduced lunch. Uh, we qualified for free lunch in school. Uh, we were part of what some would call the working poor, living paycheck to paycheck. But what I love and appreciate my late father for is he instilled in us that we should always dream big, that we should shoot for the moon, no matter what our circumstance was. And that's what we did. I became the first in my family to graduate from high school, and the first in my family to go to college, and the first in my family to graduate from college. My father told me that I could change the trajectory of my family, a family of mostly of, of former slaves, and they were also laborers most of their lives. My grandmother was a domestic laborer who worked in people's homes. My father was a custodian who cleaned toilets and mopped floors. But they told me I could do anything I put my mind to. And that's how I became the first in my family to graduate from college. But also, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize someone else who, at the time, I did not know played a critical role in my life. And that is my mother. This is a woman who was 
20, 21 years old when she made a very difficult decision. And that decision was to allow for my grandmother to raise me. Now, no woman comes to that decision very lightly. However, she knew that I had a better opportunity, a better chance in this world moving from New York to Virginia. And we have just reconnected our relationship. But I stand here today to tell you that she made a very difficult decision as a young woman, and that also saved my life. I went on to pursue my dream of public service, uh, to help the least of these, from knocking on doors, being a part of our democracy, knocking on doors, getting folks registered to vote, getting folks out to vote, and rising all the way up to be able to lead the Democratic Party apparatus in the state at age 26. And that is what Jim said. I had an opportunity to run into the guy who would end up being the governor of this great commonwealth. And given that opportunity to work with him, he gave me the chance to serve as the secretary of the commonwealth, the first African-American secretary of the commonwealth. The oldest, most public-facing office, uh, one of the oldest, most public-facing offices in the state. There we worked on issues like voting rights. My father was a former offender. He was a felon. He lost his right to vote some years back. He made a mistake as a young man. And as the Secretary of the Commonwealth, my office, ironically, handled the restoration of one's civil and voting rights. So the work became personal, not just for me, but for the nearly 200,000 people who are disenfranchised in our great commonwealth. And working alongside the governor, we restore the rights of 200,000 former felons, the most in the United States of America. Now those who at one time walked around with scarlet letters on their chests had an oppor opportunity to access the franchise. Now their voices were heard. This is the sort of work that gets me out of bed each and every morning. The opportunity to work on behalf of people who have been rendered voiceless. But we have an opportunity to make their voices even louder. When I was a young man, I, my dad told me to look for a few things in my future career. First, he told me to look for work that was impactful, work that made a difference. I am lucky and I'm blessed uh, to be here with you all today because there are a number of people who are just as smart and intelligent as me and as you who don't get to be in such hallowed ha halls. But they are just as important to our society. They can contribute just as much, but they need someone to provide them that voice. So look for work that is impactful. And then my father said, Look for work that is challenging. Look for work that is challenging and at times difficult. And I have to say, local politics can be a little challenging at times. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's those challenges that make us better, that make us stronger. I almost want to say I've seen it all, but we have not seen it all. And lastly, my dad said, look for work that is fun that you enjoy. And I've been lucky enough that every day since I've graduated from college, when I step out of bed in the morning, I've never dreaded going to work because my, fun, my work is impactful, challenging, and fun. Now, I juxtapose that with the life my father led, a guy who, I have to admit, dreaded going to work each and every morning because he was cleaning bathrooms and, and scraping gum off a desk. But he went to work every morning as a proud man, as a proud black man, because he was willing to make that sacrifice for the next generation, his offspring. And that's how I stand here today. Now, I will be remiss if I did not prescribe to you some tips and recommendations to achieve success 
in your home countries. And for me, it's very, very simple. I have a very simple philosophy when it comes to achieving that success. First, do your work with kindness and empathy. Kindness and empathy. My grandmother told me this is just the golden rule. Treat others the way you'd want to be treated. I was told long ago that you never know who you may encounter once in life may also show back up in your life. And that's the way this work actually occurs. Someone you may meet 20 years ago may appear in your life again. And they will be remember that first impression they had of you. Whether or not you were kind hearted or whether or not you ignored them and treated them as less. So bring kindness and empathy to your work. La uh, another tip is surround yourself with good people. My father says surround yourself with people who have just as much to lose as you do. Because unfortunately sometimes we surround ourselves with people who have less to lose. And they are willing to gamble with your capital to ensure that they get ahead. Surround yourself with people who have just as much to lose as you do. And lastly, the work in your country will depend upon you not quitting. You not quitting. I say this regularly, and that is there are people waking up each and every day endeavoring to ensure that you quit. That you quit. People who, when they wake up in the morning, they eat their oatmeal and their Wheaties. They are endeavoring to ensure that you quit and you give up. You have to remember, no matter how large the obstacle may be, it may be a mountain. You have to learn to outsmart those obstacles. Go around it. Go underneath it. Go through it. But don't quit. You will face adversity. But you can't give up or they win. To me, that is resilience, the ability to bend, but don't break. And you all stand here resilient in the face of the trauma that you all may have faced in your own personal lives. We all stand here undefeated in spite of the historical and racial trauma that has been inflicted upon our race and various ethnicities, and that unfortunately continue to this very day. Your time and training in this prestigious program will help augment the skills, talents, and resources that you already had as you plan to go forth and transform your respective spaces, communities, institutions, cities, towns, states, nations, and the world. We need your knowledge, your experience and creativity to help generate equitable and sustainable solutions to government and society's most pressing challenges in areas such as housing, education, health, employment, transportation, the list goes on. So now armed with your experience as a Mandela Fellow, I challenge each of you to utilize your diverse experiences to dig deep Stand confidently and work courageously on behalf of truth and justice. I challenge you to push even harder in the face of adversity, knowing that it will not prevail. You have all the tools you need to succeed and continue making an even greater impact in helping others and transforming the world so that children, women, people, and communities everywhere in all parts of the world can live and thrive. As the late honorable inspirational leader Nelson Mandela once stated, what counts in life is not the mere fact that we lived. It is what difference we have made to the lives of others that will determine the significance of the life we led. Mandela has left the legacy that the power of the human spirit prevails and can overcome all odds. May you courageously carry on his great legacy 
in all that you do for the betterment of humanity and as you experience your own personal growth and transformation in this great process. Thank you for your time and good luck with success. Thank you.